everybody and welcome to the ARC Audio Technical Training Series. We're going to give you a quick overview here on the PSC controller for the PS8 Digital Sound Processor. We're going to give you a step-by-step -step walkthrough of all the different features and functions and show you the diversity and flexibility that makes this controller superior over any of the other controllers for today's DSPs on the market. So let's get started. As you see here, we've got a scrolling screen. Now because the PSC uses an OLED display, we want to make sure that there's no long-term uh, burn-in on these screens. So we have a screen saver option built into it. Now the timing on this is programmable through the function control panel on the PSC and we're going to give you an overview on that. So let's go ahead and get started. First thing we're going to do is we're going to toggle the, uh, toggle the volume knob here so we go back to the home screen. You can see that from the home screen at all times you have your volume. What type of input, as you see here, there's analog. If you're doing digital, it'll actually show you the sample rate of the signal that you're receiving, as well as your temperature in Fahrenheit and Celsius, as well as also the voltage of your system. This is a great, great tool to have, especially if you're doing some of those late night listening sessions in your car or sitting in a parking lot or something like that. And you want to make sure you don't kill your battery. Now, anytime you go into anything other than the volume on your first fire up, we do have a disclaimer here. You can either agree or disagree. If you disagree, the only thing you're going to have access to is uh, the volume control. So we're going to go ahead and agree. Now we're going to back out of this and we're going to talk about uh, the couple of functions here. It's really simple. We've got a rotary volume knob as well as there's an encoder built into it and momentary tack switch so you can push the center button and that's one of your function buttons. So that's function one. Then we have the top button which is function two and the bottom button which is function three. Now one of the really cool functions about this is say is if you don't want to run a head unit and you want to have the controller run the entire system, like say if you're running the Bluetooth module at the PS8 and you want to use your phone on a boat or a UTV or something like that, you can come down here and push on the bottom function button and with the system turned off, as long as you have power and ground to it, you can hold that button for three seconds and it'll turn on and turn off your system, just like if you're holding a source button uh, on a radio. But that's for another. That's for some different kinds of systems. Let's talk about the common install and how to make this thing work. So first off, we have our user interface menu. Go ahead and press the ro the rotating encoder on the TAC, and you'll see we have presets, sub level, center level, balance, fade, and help. So if we want to go into presets, we just simply select that one more time, and you see that we have the options here for preset 1, 2, and 3. And if we want to select it, we simply just press the momentary button in the middle of the encoder. Now the nice part about this is if you're depending what side the controller is on, which we'll go over how that works as well, and how to select which side you want your controls on here in a minute, always remember that turning into the screen goes down and away from the screen goes up. And that's carried across to all the different menus. So if you want to back up, now you just hold the single button like that, or say if you're in that menu and you want to go all the way home, you just hold that top button for two seconds and that'll take you back to the home menu. Now, we also have sub-level. So in your software, if you have set your sub-assignment for the channels that you want to affect the sub, you come in, just select it, and you can adjust the amount of sub that you want to have changed just like you would through a sub-level control in a head unit. Same thing with center, and of course if you've assigned your balance and fade, you can come in and adjust your balance and fade as well through the control. Now as we move further into this, we can come in and now we're going to hit the top button here. Now from the home menu, this takes you into a secondary menu. You can see your firmware version number, which is version 6.7 on the PSC, and we have DSP, display, and units. Now, first we'll start with units. If we go into units, you can come in, and this is something that any consumer, dealer, whoever's using it can change at any time. You have temperature and distance. So we'll enter temperature, and right now it says Fahrenheit active. You can come up here and collect Celsius. I'm in the state, so I'm going to keep it at Fahrenheit, and then we're going to back up. Distance, you can select your delay measurements for centimeters, inch, feet, in milliseconds. I prefer milliseconds, so we're going to hit enter and back out of it. Another area that's accessible, even if you have restrictive settings on the PSE, is display. We come into display, 
And we've got colors, brightness, screensaver, orientation, factory reset remote, and auto home time. Now, auto home time, remember when we started, we had that scrolling screen. If you click on it, it'll say home after 31 seconds. Well, I, wanted, I want to go ahead and increase that. Actually, auto home takes you back to the home screen regardless where you are in the menu. But we're going to say we're going to set this for, I don't know, 30.8 seconds. That's fine. Now we're going to come back here and we're going to go to factory reset remote and you can click on that and that will actually reset all the settings on the remote back to the default settings. Now orientation is something that's really cool um, depending on how, where you are in the world and what side of, this, uh, what side of the uh, driver's seat you're going to be installing this on. One of the issues I always had with other controllers was if I was mounting this in the center console driving on the left hand side and I put my hand on the volume knob I was always blocking the screen so I couldn't see anything. Well, what we've done here is we have orientation left-handed and right-handed. So we can scroll up, and as you see now, that changes everything here onto the screen. Get ourselves back in zoom here. So as a result, you can flip this and rotate this in any direction that you want and be able to give yourself left-handed and right-handed operation. But I like the left-handed operation, so we're going to flip this back over and we're going to reset this for left-handed. Now we're going to go ahead and back out of this. Screensaver, we can come back to that scrolling screen. And you have dimming time, which is when it dims the screen down. The screensaver time, which is when the screen starts scrolling. And blanking time, when it physically turns off the screen. We also have brightness brightness you can change the display level button level and also with dim now if you remember right on your ps8 you have a terminal on the power block called illumination if you hook that up to your parking lights and define that as ground or as positive trigger you can actually define everything from the display to the buttons and you can adjust the level they're at so we can come in the buttons first this is would be without see the color red is changing and dimming down we're going to leave that at max now we're going to back out of this come up to display level oops I'm sorry we're going to go down to dim buttons level so now when the illumination is on we can turn those down from bright down to the lower setting so we're not getting blinded at night so that's something you can define individually for uh, your specific application and of course the same thing for the display as well you can adjust the intensity level of the brightness of the display both with the illumination trigger and without. Now we're going to go ahead and we're going to go up to colors. Now one of the things I like about this is if you're getting ready to integrate this into a car nothing I can't stand more than having some electronics where the factory colors of the illumination and stuff don't match the vehicle. So what we've done is if you go into colors you can change the text, the highlight, the graphics, and the buttons. We'll just go down to the buttons here and show you how this works. So say if you have a uh, say if you have a GM and you have uh, kind of like a teal button with a red accent and you want those red accents shown, well you can change the color of the buttons from magenta, blue, aqua, green, yellow, red, and white. So we're gonna set red. And we're going to go ahead and back out of it. Now we can come into the graphics. Now you see the word graphics in there. We have a full RGB panel in here so you can actually change the graphics to whatever color that matches the rest of your maybe your display panel uh, for a newer uh, style uh, odom you know, speed odometer and uh, telemetry display. Um, you can match all that now as well as you can also match the text and that'll carry over through all the menus. Now one of the functions in the PSC for dealers is we do have a password lockout which will limit customers to specifically just these couple of menus. But now if you do have full access to um, all the menus you can roll up and use DSP. And you have the options for equalizer, crossovers, delay, and output phase. So you can come in here and you see we have channels 1 through 8. You simply highlight the channel you want. We'll go to channel 5, press the button. And there you go. We've just flipped channel 5 180 degrees out of phase. We'll go ahead and put that back. And so on. You can do that with any of these channels. Now we're going to go ahead and back up and we're going to go to delay. And here you go in delay. And you can come into say we're going to go to channel 4 again. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to adjust the delay. And right now I have my delay displayed in milliseconds. 
which was something you can define in the parameters section back on the main screen or through your uh, GUI as well. So we're going to back up out of there. We're going to come up here to crossovers. Now let's say we're on crossovers. First thing you're going to see is the highlighted channel 1. So we're going to go ahead and we'll, pre we'll push the button. That way we activate that and we can now select our different, uh, our different crossovers here. So we're going to go to channel 5 and we're going to press enter so it goes and so it embeds. And right now we have a high pass crossover link with Riley 24 dB at 4500 Hz. But say we want to go ahead and do a low pass on this. Let's say this is for a tweeter. We're going to go ahead and come down here to the frequency. Now it says off and we're going to turn it to the right and you're going to see now it's going to activate the crossover and turn it to the 20,000 Hertz or 20 K. If we want to turn that off and make it just high pass again, we're going to roll one click past 20 K and shut it off. But let's say we want to put, uh, we're going to go ahead and speed this up here because this does have an algorithm built into it to where you're not doing one frequency at a time, but you can just adjust it slowly. And you see, you can scroll through all of these right down to the frequency you want at 18 K or, you can roll it up faster and jump based upon the algorithm up the 20k. So we're going to go ahead and set a 20k and we're going to select a link with Riley on the damping and oops, went the wrong one there. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to go to slope and put a 24 dB link with slope on there. So now our crossover is set. And of course you have the ability of doing this on all your channels. Now the next one, which is really cool and something unique for a lot of these controllers, is the equalizer. You have a full 31 band across 8 channels, so 248 bands, 3rd octave EQ. Now some of you are going to use the parametric EQ. Not to worry, the parametric EQ is blocked out of this, so if you have a frequency that's selected, it will restrict you from being able to use that band and overriding what you've done. However, even though we're on a remote, if you look down here in the bottom, we have eight check boxes that are highlighted by a red box. If you click the second box right there, you now see we only have check one. But wait a minute, we had two before. That's right. You have the ability of either adjusting these one at a time or in pairs, or you can check off all eight of the channels and actually have full global capability for final tuning and be able to adjust those channels relatively, just like in the software through the controller, which makes this a very unique option that no other controller currently has and gives you complete tuning capability for on-the-fly tuning in your vehicle. Of course, though, we don't recommend you do this while you're driving, though. Do this, please, while you're parked uh, in your garage, in your driveway, in a parking lot, something like that. We don't want to see anybody get hurt. But as you see, this is an absolutely flexible piece has a ton of options and features for the people that want to have that control and at the same time gives you the expansion availability as well for uh, standalone systems using the PSA and your phone or another Bluetooth device as your source unit for your entire system so with that said good luck and good tuning and keep you guys out there enjoying your music and have fun